I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. Coming this way, my beautiful wife, Natasha. <laughs> I'm getting into uh, chapter 14 of Deuteronomy. Let's open up in prayer. Father in heaven, again, I come before you. So thankful, Lord God, that we can read your word, your word that opens our minds, opens our minds to the universe, opens our mind to your love, your deep, deep love and forgiveness and long suffering, Lord God. We thank you so much. You've suffered so long with us, Lord God, all the way through the Israelites and, and down to us. We thank God that you watch over us. You, you know every hair on our head, Lord God. You see every sparrow drop out in the forest. You see it all, you know it all, and you still have time for us. That's how great you are. And you still have time for us, Lord God, while running the universe. We ask you right now, Lord God, to forgive our sins, to open our minds, to cleanse us, that we can take your word in. Your word that a five-year-old child can understand because it's so simple, yet so awesome. So we ask you right now, heal the sick. Anoint, Lord God, remember the anointing. Anoint us, Lord God to teach your word, to preach your word in these end times. So forgive us our sins, heal us of all illnesses, of all suffering, and open our minds to this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we continue to join me uh, chapter 14. And, um, before we're going to start the chapter, we want to see that the um, Lord is uh, trying to separate, trying to separate our physical body from our spiritual body. So in the very first verse, he is mentioned um, dead. He is mentioned dead, and we will try to understand who the dead really are. Well, in one hand, if we're going to go to Revelation, um, we remember that uh, you can have a first death as your physical body, but you also can have your second death as a spiritual body. And if we remember, um, we also got warning in the Bible saying, do not be afraid those that can kill you physically, but be afraid of those that can kill you spiritually. Right, so we're talking about the second death. So um, to to make it a little bit more clear for us, we're going to go to Matthew right now, Matthew eight twenty two, and we will try to understand who are the dead people that Jesus mentioned uh, with the red letters in the New Testament because we're going to talk about this in the Old Testament today. So chapter 8, verse 22. And this situation, we remember that one uh, gentleman uh, came to Jesus and said, well, Jesus, I I would love to follow you, but my father is uh, dead, right? Is he dead? Dying. Dying, dying. So in other way, it's going to be his funeral and I want to be there for him. And Jesus uh, clearly said in uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 22. Right. What did he say? He said, but Jesus said unto him, follow me now. This is your chance. And let the dead bury their dead. So let's talk here for a second and try to identify who is mentioned here. So first, he uh, first we know that um, this gentleman's father uh, died or dead already, right? No, not dead. If he was dead, go. If he's dying, he could be dying for three years. 
It could be a okay, slow just, death. Just a second. Just mm-hmm. a second. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, he's, to get he's not him. dead. He's dying. It doesn't matter. The point <laughs> is that Jesus identified him as a dead physically and apparently spiritually, right? So, another way, when Jesus replied to this man, he knew what kind of people this gentleman uh, surrounded by, and he identified them as spiritually dead. And he's calling this man. He's telling him, come with me, because here is if your father physically dead, right? He is no longer spiritually with your family. He is with our father in heaven. So let the people who is dead spiritually to bear that dead physically. And now we're going to go back to Matthew um, 14, verse 1, and we will see there uh, what exactly kind of dead people we're talking about again. Okay, Deuteronomy. 14. Deuteronomy uh, 14, 14, verse 1. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Now we're going to stop here for a second. So here we are. We're talking about people dead spiritually. Why? Because particularly nowadays, our physical bodies are became more important than our spiritual body. Look at all these uh, surgeries that people are willing to do and change themselves to be unrecognizable. And in this chapter 14, so in other way, uh, the body that's going to go to grave anyway, right. right? They are altering this body, altering this body to to the point that other will like them. Mm-hmm. The people that don't care less about your spiritual, they suddenly will like you if your nose is going to be different. They suddenly they will like you if your figure is going to be different. So not recognizing creating of the God as a spiritual, but recognizing those people that cutting themselves and changing them visually for other people, for those people to like them, the people that are dead spiritually and cannot recognize God creation. So this is the first verse because we're going to get right away to the second verse if we can. I think 14, we can. 14, 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord, thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar, a called out, a special people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Sounds kind of prejudice. Sounds like God is calling out. What about everybody else? Well, it's God, remember, it's not me. It's not her telling you. It's the word of God. He's using them as a light to the world. He's using them as a witness to the world. And at first, they weren't a very good witness, were they? So what was important to God here? For the God was important their behavior, their action, and their works on the first verse age. So another way, he did not care how they look. He did not care uh, about their physical appearance or any of that because there's no physical appearance in the first earth age. We all were spirits, right? But what he did care, he did care that this few were on his side, stood up for him. And this is why he decided to choose this nation and from that nation to create lineage that the seed of the Christ is going to come that's going to save the entire world. So he is your true meaning. So the second verse is saying that Lord has chosen thee to be a, a treasure people. Right? Treasure. Treasure. Right. Very treasure. special. Very treasure people. And he chose you not based on a first paragraph, not based on your look, how you cut yourself, right? Or how you um, make your, let's say, shave your head. Disfigure. Right? Not, not like you, not your... Not you, not you became bold naturally, right? But you shave your head, it's in shape between your eyes, it means your head, uh, for the look. Right. Right. So another way, the first paragraph is 
exactly opposite from the second uh, so second paragraph that tells you what is really matter to God. However, the entire paragraph itself, uh, in the, the entire chapter itself, is about physical body. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about physical body today, and it's probably the most, um, how should I say, the easiest, the easy one um, to get even more faithful, even more clear in in true to God. Uh, why? Because it's so visual and it's so uh, obvious. Right. Another way. If you wondering about anything else that written in the Bible, just try this. Try to improve your immune system by using a recommendation from our Lord, from our God. And you will find out that in comparison of the years that you were sick every single year, even with a simple cold, that your immune system suddenly turn around completely. <laughs> Cleans up. So today we're going to look at the treasure that God recommends us to use to make your system strong, physically strong, because your physical body is the tool that carry you through the second earth age. Right. And if you will ignore that physical body, that the physical body is going to be degraded to the point that you will not able to work on your on your soul as we're meant to be here in a second earth age. So what we're talking right now here is very interesting. Something physical that you can do to yourself, surgeries, for example, cosmetic surgeries, right? As a cut yourself, mm -hmm. or anything that make any different in appearance of yours, or you can, let's say, like here they say, well, shave your head, anything physical right will not affect on your spiritual being at all right and god also mentioned here on the second paragraph that importance of of you to be as a god created you in reflection of your appearance as you are right so in other way your inner self is true reflection on your on your look so in other way, if you decided to change yourself and you decided to improve yourself and you decided to work on your soul, not to go into cosmetic surgeries, but to work on your soul, that suddenly your appearance going to be reflected because your soul became better. Your soul become cleaner. Your soul become more radiant. Remember, we talk about the Shekinah glory. Right. Because you closer to God, not by doing physical surgery, cosmetic operation, cutting yourself, or going to a beauty salons and etc. But work on your beauty of your soul. Within. Within. So, uh, the physical body that we have to take care of on simply follow instruction of God, not changing, changing really anything physically, but following his instruction on what to eat and what not to eat, also going to bring your soul on a completely different level. Why is important was at that time? Well, because the lineage, the lineage of Christ should be pure and clean. So God was trying to take care of all kinds of ways, right? Spiritual, physical to clean up the nation one nation where the Jesus is gonna come from to save other nations on any possible way that that exists so we're going to um, learn today that it, the system itself is very simple right if we're going to take water uh, earth and if we're gonna take uh, air all kind of creatures exist Right. right in this kind of uh, different, environment different different environments and every single environment has its uh, needs should we say mm -hmm. right so in other way if you will just let it, it goes let it run just let's say earth without right. cleansing those ill animals sometimes uh, sometimes dead animals 
right, of sick animals. Dead animals create disease. That you are, that, that the beautiful uh, creation of God that's supposed to surround us in the animal world mm -hmm. suddenly going to degrade itself to the point that it probably going to destroy itself. Right. So the, the, the animals that clean, right, the scavenger, they clean the earth as important as other animals that more pleasant to us because they not deal with all this nasty uh, bad animals, sick animal, and etc. Right. The same with the water in the ocean. Right. We have beautiful fish that we love to see. We we see uh, beautiful co co corals. We'll see beautiful environment. However, if the shrimp, for example, or lobsters or any other creatures, clams, uh, are not mussels. going to taken care of a bottom part of the ocean, right where they clean right. uh, again the dead fish, the sick fish, whatever is leftovers there, then the ocean will not be able to sustain. In the same in the air. So we have some birds that uh, they fly in over and they can see where the dead animals are on the earth and that's how they feed themselves. Right. So it's very actually simple. God asks you not to eat animals that that cleaners. Yeah, the scavengers. The scavengers. They clean the ocean, they clean Don't eat buzzards. They right? They clean the earth, they clean everything that surrounds us, and that's exactly what God asks you to do, not to eat them. Because all this what is they partaking on themselves, if you will eat, will come to your system and obviously your system is not going to be healthy. Now, he also talked about uh, some animals that, for example, do not have sweat glands and they um, observe all these toxins and they not only uh, store these toxins in their body, but they particularly store them in their fat. Right. right. So if you remember several times, God tell, do not eat fat, fat is mine, right? right. Well, if you have to understand that in that time, there's no biology, there's no chemistry, there's no physics was exist. So how else he can mention to people for them to understand that, uh, let's say, uh, pigs and uh, uh, cows as well have very few uh, uh, pigs do not have sweat glands, period. But cows also have... I, got, they, I hear they have two little ones in their nostrils, but who cares, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, that ain't going to help anything. Uh, right, <laughs> but, but cows, for example, also have very few glands. So in other words, with all this pesticides and everything that we try to make our grass more green and have no weeds, Right, we're fighting the weeds. My goodness, we're just fighting them, yep. you know? The curse but of Adam. Can't have weeds. The can't curse have, of Adam. Can't have weeds. Get out. No more Garden of Eden. And you go sweat. By the sweat of your brow you live. Pulling and, weeds and insects. And, and with all these chemicals that we pour into the poor soil, uh, our animals eat this and obviously storing that in their fat. And here you are barbecuing your beautiful steak, beautiful <laughs> With a big fat, rim of fat around it. It should be healthy, <laughs> however, just because uh, what's going on with, um, with what these animals eat is not healthy. So don't eat it's that beautiful, healthy. delicious rim of fat. Cut it away. Yeah, so right. because the toxins are going to eat, that's what the toxins store, basically. So in other way, you poison yourself, and you probably will know very next day, you don't feel good, right, if you <laughs> ate that. Um, if you ate it, but but you see, it's kind of interesting. It's not just you not be not you don't feel good immediately, but your immune system. Just because you're not taking care of your immune system on a continuously basis, in cannot sustain serious illnesses. Right. And with all the situation, as you know, with COVID that we had with possibility of our illnesses coming up or just a simple flu or just a simple other illnesses just try give it a shot give it a shot and, and see if you're even gonna build your face at, uh, on such a simple instruction of God right. to eat clean right and if you're going to let's say I, I don't know in how long the system going to uh, basically clean itself right maybe it will take a year for you until your system completely uh, rebuild itself, right? Right. And maybe starting next year, you will notice that you're no longer getting sick, which right. is not. You know, you may 
uh, feel like a little bit like off or so, but your immune system so strong, then it's going to Takes beat, care of it. beat every, any illnesses you a get. And echinacea and vitamin C don't hurt the night and before, you're going right? And you to stay healthy. Right. Well, you, could, you can use uh, vitamins to support your system, right. but here's the point. The point is not to fill yourself with vitamins, but fill yourself with the clean right. food that will support your immune system. Exactly. In this chapter, there are also uh, implements of energy, right? So we're going to see that the uh, Lord is saying, so we should not eat uh, animals that uh, die by it, uh, on itself, right? We should... Um, uh, Sell it to the neighbor. We should not to the neighbor, to the stranger. <laughs> stranger. Right? Right. Strange strange. Told just remember, they'll strange. eat it anyway. Yeah. Their brothers means brothers and face. They're strangers that um, <laughs> not part of the Israel, but they are uh, part of uh, part of face as well. Right. And they're strangers, people that completely they eat anyway anything. Uh, they eat fat. They eat the pork, ham. You know they don't care. They don't anyway, matter. So it's not going to affect. Effect them, and then we're going to um, learn about this in a little bit. It's kind of interesting that um, that Arnold Murray, uh, he's saying, <laughs> I like this comparison with their air conditioning system. He said, he <laughs> "Cup said, of tea." You have to, yeah. He said, "You have to uh, treat those animals as filters, you know, filters of the air, filters of the earth." And just like you're not going to take your air conditioner filter and pull all this dirt and make tea out of it and have <laughs> enjoy it, right? You're right. going to do that. No, so I hope not. Why? Why are you partaking of animals? That wouldn't be as bad as eating pig. Why are you partaking these animals that are natural filters that God creates on the earth? So I hope it makes sense for everybody. Right. He also mentioned the importance to give to the poor, to the fatherless, to widows, um, to share with others, you know. And he also he also mentioned how important to be human to humane to to our animals. Right. So in other way, and, and there's a reason for this. If you remember, there was time when um, it was okay to keep um, production of chicken, and chicken would be in a cage. Right. They would never come out of the cage. They would be in a small cage just like this. All they can sit in there, right? They feed in here, they poop in here, the production, pro producing right. eggs. And pumping hormones. It's, it, it, it's a nightmare what humans come up with. And this, <laughs> this absence of humane turbots of the animal um, creates such a, such, a, such a ill animal. Then when you eat that animal, it's not only the hormones that the punch in the animals and, and the bad as well, but just because this animal does not have freedom and joy to live, freely live, freely enjoy a worm, a grass, right? Like walking around, running right. around. That energy itself not transferring to you and not making your body healthy. So if you know right now, they're working on synthetic uh, production of the meat, right? And it's kind of interesting that... Hey, that's when you give up meat. <laughs> you see, biologically, it's meat. But for your health, is not a healthy it's meat. It's toxic. You understand that, right? Because there's no energy of nature involved in this meat growing, right? It's not. It just as biologically, just like God said, do not cut yourself, right? right. Physically, it looks like that. But if you partake in on this, you're not getting anything good out of it. So anyway, so let's start the chapter and learn a little bit more about the care of our health and how to build our strong immune system. Okay. So let's go back to chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Just read one more time for us to grasp this understanding what God has meant for us to, to, to learn. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar... What was it again? What was the other word? Peculiar? A treasure. Treasure. A treasure. People unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Thou shalt not eat any, eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts 
which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the hart, the deer, and the roebuck, another deer, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pig orang. I think this is like a, the pig orang, that's like a uh, mountain goat, right? And the wild ox and the chamois. Chamois is another, I think it's a deer. And every beast that parteth the hoof and cleaveth the cleft unto two claws and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that you shall eat. All these animals you talked about, and that's basically do how that. you identify them, right? Mm -hmm. So another way, if the animal has both, right? Cloven, choose the cut. Mm -hmm. Cloven and choose the cut, then this is a clean animal. And right. seven. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hoof, as the camel and the hare, the rabbit, and the cooney, I think the cooney is like a badger, right? A rock badger. And uh, uh, for they chew the cud, but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. There has to be both. It cannot be just one side. Right. <laughs> and the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud. It is unclean unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have, all the fish have fins and scales, right? Catfish, boy, that's like a Louisiana special, right? Catfish don't have uh, uh, scales. They got fins, they don't have scales. What do they eat? Everything on the bar, anything that comes down, anything that comes down. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat of it. It is unclean to you. Of all clean birds ye shall eat, but these are they of which ye shall not eat. The eagle and the ostrich and the offspray. Those are like ocean eagles. and I think they're different types of eagles. And the gleed, got no clue what that is, and the kite, uh, that's another bird that's okay. like a we seagull. Don't have to comment on this. Okay, and the vulture, I think we all know what a vulture is, after his kind. Mm -hmm. And every raven, you've heard the saying, eating crow, it's not a good thing, is it? And every raven, after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk, after his kind, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the cormorant, cormorant, and the stork, and the heron, after a kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. I think it's obviously you don't eat a bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you. They shall not be eaten. But of all clean fowls ye may eat. And shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it or sell it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien, not an alien from space, you know, someone that's not of Israel. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. Now, what does that mean? Probably the most delicious thing in the world well, would be. Well, Siddhar, this is again, this is, it's, it's, it's not exactly meaning. It's not put meat in the milk. First of all, there's no even meal, uh, uh, meal like this. You know, what right. kind of meat, the uh, food you have then has meat, combination of meat and milk. This is what we talk about. We talk about being humane to the animal. Right. right? So if you, if you think about like what the Lord is saying, He is saying you're not going to uh, sear the, uh, the, the kid, right? Yeah, boil Let's it say, in its own mother's milk. In the mother's milk. So That's like a saying, slap on the face to the cow. Yeah, so He's saying you just have to be humane to the animals that, and you love them and you care of them. 
uh, take care of them. Why? Because that energy, that love that you're giving to your, your, your animals, they come coming back to you when you're going to eat that meat. Right. You're going to eat that food. And basically, that's all it's about. Right. And 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn and of thy wine and of thine oil and of thy firstlings and of thy herd and of thy flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. I'm just going to stop here for a second and I just want to mention something important um, that unfortunately lost in American society and that is uh, the tradition of family to sit down together and have a meal together, have a dinner together and share with each other their news, their experiences through the day, their achievements, their uh, everything that they have in their hearts. Right. And unfortunately, um, in all goodness that the United States achieved, um, I think the materialistic world that became um, basically worship, worshipped and became more like worship to this mammon, right? When they say mammon, that's basically wealth, right? Mammoth. Wealth, money. Um, Filthy mammon. And, 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 and people get so frustrated. Why? Because uh, the society forcing them to achieve certain levels, to have certain cars, to live in a certain house, to because that's just what it is. It's There's no any way around. And people do work three, four jobs to achieve that. Uh, women became man, literally, and instead of taking care of their children, taking care of their husbands, taking care of their, their family, they became equal to man. And whatever whatever this women demand, and we all applaud to this women, but if you're going to look at the family, um, is it hurting our families? And is it hurting our children? Uh, how lonely our children are because our moms are fully work and never home never having time for when child come back home from school. There's no parents around. Right. The child on its own, right? Or he needs to be uh, not even with grandma because American society does not have grandparents living together, right? right? There's nobody can really be with that child. And what that child does, the child is supported by media, phone, TV, right? Uh, he can go outside to play with uh, with uh, friends because it's not safe to be outside. So he literally stuck with uh, technology right. that ruined our children, and then was surprised why our children going to, and um, locking and loading AK 47s going to school to the schools and going literally insane. And why suddenly girls wants to be boys and boys wants to be girls. What is going on in our society? Well, who, hey, don't who dis- ask. Who destroy the relationship, the true family relationship? That kids are so busy, all they can do is grab a sandwich and, and the parents shovel that sandwich to their kids. There's no time of dinner together. Everybody on its own, mixing something, cooking something, grabbing something. There's no time when people actually sit down. And now we're going to have a nice dinner together. And unfortunately, we creators of this unfortunate situation that we're facing now, and we clearly see that we did not go in the right way, right? It was all due respect for for women, uh, the one that um, achieving all kind of things, but at the end of the story, the person and that woman needs to be happy as a woman, not as just a person uh, achieving something. Not as a defense attorney. (laughs) And getting some dollars amount in achievement, but in return, the woman born to receive love, to receive love from men, from family, from children, and to give love to her family. So, and unfortunately, we too paranoid about money, we're paranoid about accomplishment. We're paranoid about me, me, me. 
I became a man and look at me now and it's not going in the right direction because if it would that our society would be better if would we would not see crime in the street if would our children would be happy and not suffering from through this mental disorders and the pills that uh, we take our children to psychologists and shuffle pills to our children because they all OCD or whatever they are that we consider them up. they just have lack of attention lack of love lack of parenting lack of somebody who can hug them and talk to them and express not through the phone not through the through the TV but what God told us diligently teach your children but there's no time for that we're all grabbing things and we're running with hey. it There's no time for that. TV programs. Right. There's no time for that. We're so cursed by God. Do you blame him? Where are you? Where's your prayer life? Where's asking for blessings? Where's God? Remind God says, remind me of my promises. Why? So I'll give them to you. I'll do them for you. You don't need three jobs. You need one job and do it right and seek God and get blessed. Guess what will happen? Boom! Right? Nobody believes it anymore. Well then, okay. But Bye. The curses that we're talking about, this is iniquities. Iniquities that pour in into you just because you're not full of the world of God. Right. right? This is correspondence that your soul is became the struggle mechanism that you're trying to pull through this mechanism of uh, whatever that's, that society presents to you saying that if you buy another car, you're going to be happy. If you're going to move to the bigger home, you're going to be happy. If you're going to buy another set of jewelry, you're going to be happy. And it's interesting as you're buying it, as you're moving it, and as you're uh, growing in this material world, none of that makes you happy. None of that. No. And that's very interesting because we as society, we worship in not our spiritual being, being, but we're cutting ourselves for the dead. Who the dead are? The ones that worship of all this material world that they can't even take with them. So what's the point? Right? right. There's no point behind. The spiritual. Anyway. That's what matters. Yeah. That's what's eternal. None of this is eternal. It's all going to burn. What did God say? I won't wipe you out with a flood anymore. Next time, it's going to be fire. Right? Anything evil on this earth, any one evil on this earth, cooked. Well, the fire is not going to be a fire as you see in a fire fireplace, fire pit, right? <laughs> it's not that fire. We're talking about high energy uh, vibration of, of God, God, right? That consumes He's... absolutely everything that is not in alignment with that vibration. And that's how we're learning. We're learning through the instruction of God how to deal not to be consumed, but be in alignment with that energy and a filter sage. Right. That's basically the whole point we're doing right now. And verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and of the first the firstlings of thy herds, and of the flocks, and thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And the more you tithe, what's going to happen? The more you're blessed. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord, thy God, shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then shalt thou turn into money. You take your sheep, you take your lambs, you take your produce, sell it. Now you get money in thine hand and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatso whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, for sheep, for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, 
and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household. And at the, um, I used to go to a church, and it, it, it um, carried out the old laws like this. And the, the Feast of Tabernacles, you saved a tithe, right, um, for the year, and you took that tithe, and you went, and you went to Sacramento, you went to um, Nogales, Mexico, you went wherever you wanted to go, wherever the church was, right? And you party, right? You had a good time. You bought anything you wanted. You stayed at the nicest places, just like they're talking about, right? But, so. but again, the importance here, look what they said, what the Lord said. Um, thou shall rejoice, thou uh, and, and, and thy household. Right, so in right. other words, that's what we're talking about when the entire family gets, gets together, together around the table, have meal, praise the Lord, rejoice the Lord, and it's happened on a continuously uh, basis, not once on a new, new year and a sense given as we normally get together, but a continuous basis because it's a continuous reminder to you. Uh, to thank God, number one, and number two, to appreciate connection with your family and relationship that you build as you sit in around the table and have this delicious meal together. Perfect. And it's exchange of this energy, which right. is tremendous. See, my family never did that, but when I was about 16, 17, 16 and 17, I had a best friend, uh, my buddy Stan, and his mom and dad were like the salt of the earth, right? She got cancer and, and got rid of it with this super juicer. All she drank was carrot juice, and she wiped it out, right? And um, she would prepare on Sunday. they come home from church, right? Mm -hmm. i come home from my church with my parents. But we didn't do this, right? But they had a table, a big table, like the Waltons, right? And then she, she could cook anything so good. And we'd all just sit there. Because we're kids, I mean, I now I can't eat and eat and eat. Back then, I could eat and eat and eat anything all day, right? And we would just sit around and talk about God, talk about life, talk about motocross. What do you want to talk about, right? I remember that like yesterday, you know? It was just such, even though it wasn't my family, it was a family of people that were just, just super awesome. If you remember this uh, Last Supper, obviously, it's right. a Same kind of time, thing. right? When uh, people just sit down and have a good time. With they each sup other together. And good meal with each other. And that's probably the most precious moment of the last uh, time when Jesus Christ was Jesus Christ. Right? right. If you think about that particular last days, that's probably the most precious thing that happened at that time when right. he wasn't about to go. Right. right that particular time when you sit down together and and honestly like uh, in us this is what like really missing here that not too many family doing this right uh, maybe it's more uh, i don't even know if it's as common uh, again even uh, let's say hispanic family right because they're more like family oriented too but just because the schedule is so crazy busy and everybody studying and working and working and studying. I don't think even those families, they have much time for family actually time. Uh -uh. People grabbing things as they come home, they eat separate from everybody else, they focus on themselves, they never even share food with each other. They say, hey, would you like to, 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 to enjoy something with me? Or even you even tell them, they even get offended and you say, why are you offering me? I, I don't hungry, I don't want to eat. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> is it just like, they don't give it, you eye contact. What it, are you talking about? It, don't bother is me. It, is it something that, that we should do with, and, and have um, this um, care for each other and uh, share, share things with each other and enjoy each other's company? And unfortunately, this is a, such a lot in American society and um, it's not bringing good, um, good outcomes. I told you this before a couple episodes ago because we were talking about the same kind of thing. And I go in with my kid into uh, IHOP, you know, International House of Pancakes. And this family comes in, father, mother, three daughters, right? Everybody like this, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like interested, right? Mm -hmm. What's this family about, right? They're about nothing. They're about zero as a family, right? So I'm just I'm glancing, right? 
through their whole meal. They got there about, you know, I was able to watch them eat the whole meal. Now, one time, did one of them give any, forget talking, there was zero communication, all on the cell phone, eating, had to order, right? Pretty sick. Yeah. Pretty sad. Just pathetic. Okay. And 27. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. The Levites are gods. At the, um, uh, the, the Levites belong to God Almighty. He takes care of them. So we need, Plenty. To, we need to remember that at that time, God decided not to give any inheritance for Levite, right? And Levite did not have any farming land to farm, right? They maybe have some amount of animals, but they really farm wasn't there. The, yeah, they weren't. The they weren't the workers. Because they were been working for God the temple. They were handling been, the temple. Right, they've been handling the tabernacle at that time. Sacrifices. All they've been doing is uh, working basically with God and for God. Right. Right. And God asked them, "Do not forget them, because they need to be fed as well." Right. Okay. And twenty-eight. See, and the more you're blessed, the more tithes you bring. It's just a multiplication, right? Those go to the Levites. Levites weren't hurting, that's for sure. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And the Levites, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee and the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand, which thou dost. Live right, get blessed. Live wrong, hey, be cursed. It's, again, it's as simple as the nose on your face, right? And here we are finalizing our chapter 14 of Deuteronomy to remind you that it's important to take care of your immune system, right? Right. And give it a shot. If you, um, let's say a person that's saying, I'm not the liver and it's hard for me to believe in anything written in the Bible, I think this would be the very first step that you can take if you will cleanse your body and you will see that you no longer get in sick that it may uh, excite you and it make make you take another step right. and learn other commandments of God and His uh, His uh, statutes and follow His instructions because the one worked and worked well in the will. We tested this, a proven, you know. So it's right. it's incredible to clean eat clean and be clean and have your good immune system and something to be excited about. It's a true blessing. So we well, thank you so much for being with us today and we'll see you chapter 15 short. That's right. All right. See you for chapter 15. Same place, same time. <laughs>